Lord, I want to sing praises unto you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless y'all. We are so blessed this morning. How many of you have one of these in the pew in front of you? That's the hymnal. It's one of those. Pick it up. Everybody that got one, I know we had a bunch of them. Some of y'all took them home. <laughs> Hold it up. Not the Bible, the hymnal. Now, I want you to turn to page 349. Page 349 in that hymnal. You got it? You got it? What does it say? Okay, who is it by? Margaret J. DeRoe. You're going to be blessed today because that's our speaker for this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Today, you will remember this day forever. You had an opportunity to sit in the presence of greatness. Dr. DeRoe is not, she's known for her music, but I want you to know that her word is just as powerful as her music. Awesome woman of God, and I just felt so honored when I called and asked her if she would be our speaker for today, and she accepted without hesitation. And so I am so blessed, and I know that you're going to be blessed. Many of you have worked with Dr. DeRoe at the various conferences, the women's conference, the music workshops. Also, there's some information out on the table. I'll just share a little bit more with you about that. There's some CDs out there. There's some information on the gospel music, on the Heritage uh, Music Foundation. Uh, and we want you to stop by the table, be a blessing to the ministry. But I don't want to take any more of her time. I want her to, to bring it this morning. Amen. Our speaker for this Mother's Day, none other than Dr. Margaret Pleasant DeRoe. Reverend Turner has grown to be a close friend of me and my work. He's been truly, truly supportive, and I'm glad to be here this morning. I brought my family with me. That boy over there in the corner, Don, he belongs here, but he don't go to church. <laughs> but he don't go to church. Calling you ain't enough. Stand up, Juan. Stand up, Don. So if y'all see him, he's supposed to be at church. Pastor Turner trying to take up for you, saying you call. <laughs> this boy back here hangs around on the drums. He's been a lot, a lot of music for all of his life, he and his mother. And my children are outside, my grandchildren. I see, I see Reverend Turner got the grandparent fever. Hey. <laughs> Always bragging. <laughs> I sure have it. And my grandchildren outside now with all of the things I brought with me. I, we have the hair, I see you my, he came and got it this morning. I thank God for that because we live really far. And he was just as. He was expedient. He, he got us here. Thank you so much. Now he's on the sound. But my grandchildren are outside. I brought with me some information about the Heritage Music Foundation. Our goal is to build a gospel house where we can celebrate gospel music because we believe if the Grand Ole Opry can celebrate country western, Carnegie can celebrate classical, and 
the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is in existence, we sure ought to say something about gospel music. So we do have a breakfast coming up. The tickets are $30, they're outside. But one thing we do have that I think all of you ought to try to get is a calendar with great contributions that our, our gospel music musicians have made, like Rodina Preston. There are pictures of all of these great people on this calendar, so be sure and get one. But my highlight, and I know Reverend Turner wish he could do it, but I wrote a rap. <laughs> Here's a message to the government and to the dope man. can't be around this stuff and just ignore it. I wrote it and I tried to send it to the White House. They evidently didn't pay any attention. <laughs> but at least I got it out of my system. And those of you who play CDs, get one of those and you'll know what a, how old am I? 78 year old woman can do. Yeah, y'all think y'all the only ones can rap, huh? <laughs> yeah, I know how to rap. I'm so glad to be here. I look at these mothers. Y'all look like the way we used to go to church. Mm -hmm. My mama used to have hat, gloves, rhinestone earrings, Lily Ann suits. And you are absolutely beautiful. Thank you for the hospitality. We drove here in a limousine and we've been eating ever since we got here. Thank God for it. Would you just lift your hands with me and ask God to open our minds and our hearts that we may be receptive I'm going to use a word y'all don't like, change. <laughs> and we'll be receptive to change. We can't go on doing the same old stuff, but we need to hear God's word and make changes that are suitable to him. Somebody help me pray. We love you, Lord. Come on, help me. Fill the room. Fill the room with prayer. We love you, we bless you, we honor you, we give you glory. Somebody say thank you, Lord, for bringing us far. We were in a horrible pit, but you delivered us. We love you, and our foot almost slipped, but we thank you for keeping us and blessing us. Thank you for this body. Thank you for Reverend Turner. Open our hearts, open our minds, and open our thoughts so that we can be more like you. Somebody give him glory. I praise you. I honor you. I bless you. Come on, help me lift him up. We love you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Several years ago, I wrote a song called If It Had Not Been for the Lord on My Side. Tell somebody, that's true. Mm. God chose me, I didn't choose him. He took my foot out of the miry clay. Even when I didn't want to go, he carried me in the bosom. And I praise God that he's brought me this long, long way. If you've not heard the Lord speak to you, you need to go back and get in contact with him. Somebody ought to know he speaks. Anybody heard him lately? 
I mean lately, I'm not talking about seven years ago, I'm talking about lately. Every day you get on the freeway, you ought to say thank you, Lord. Every day he brings your kids home from school, you ought to say thank you, Lord. Every day that you have food on your table, even if it's red beans and rice, you ought to say, Woo! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Somehow or another, we have gotten to the point where we feel self-sufficient. But if the Lord don't keep you, you can't be kept. Ah. Uh, I don't want to testify too long, but I just feel like somebody needs to hear the fact that the Lord has brought me from a mighty long way. I've been kept by his goodness, covered with his grace. I, I know y'all got money, but God fed me without money. He prepared a table before me right in the presence. Y'all don't understand presence in the presence of my enemies. They, they couldn't even stop me from getting it. I had to, it was right there. The only problem is with the table being in the presence of your enemies, you gotta go somewhere around your enemies. Uh, right Y'all missed that. All right there. To get the blessing God gave you, you gotta get to the table through your enemies. Anybody been through right the there. enemies to get to the table? Praise God for Pastor Turner and all of these clergy that are here today. And I appreciate just being in this edifice. Today, I got a strange topic. I don't even know if I want to tell you what the topic is. But I'm not sure how many of you realize that mothers have had to bear a lot of the burden of the family. Mothers actually raise children without a man. Somehow or another, mothers have taken on the responsibility of feeding children and dressing children and getting them to school when, when the father's not even there. So we are thankful for this Mother's Day. This season, this era, seems to be the era of womanness. Some of it ain't so hot. All them women on television claiming sexual abuse ought to be ashamed. I'm not, I'm not going to stay there. I'm not going to stay there. But we hear a lot about women who have been sexually abused by men. There are a lot of women who are in the headlines that have achieved great things and we have not really taken the time to glorify what God has done through women. We see more about the women who are just, I don't want to say, well, they complaining about their life. But some of the mothers in America have struggled to get their children to school, struggled to feed them. And I want to take a minute to celebrate all of these mothers that have taken the time, the energy, to take care of their children almost by themselves. Somebody ought to say thank you for the mother. In this season, was it last year that we lost Maya Angelou, who's one of the greatest poets? That was a woman who stood tall for women. She was absolutely beautiful. She talked beautiful. You didn't hear a lot of cursing and 
I, I ain't gonna stay there, but you didn't see her dressed improperly. You, you could look up to a Maya Angelou because she carried herself as a woman. We can look at Kathy Hughes who owns the radio station. I wonder how you get the message to own a radio station but she is one of the women that ought to be highlighted during this season of womanness. Maxine Waters, have y'all heard her lately? I'd be scared for her. Because she is absolutely bold. And if, you, some, if the Lord needs to cover her, somebody needs to be praying for Maxine. Because she is not playing. She talks back to President, and I'm tell <coughs> I know he don't like it, but she, she's a little lady, and she speaks so loud and clear that I know Satan ain't happy. Somebody ought to take the control of praying for Maxine. Candelia Rice was a lady that covered the world a black woman covering the world, representing the world, while you know somebody in the White House was plotting against her. And I, you know, I kind of wonder if we understand what these women have to sacrifice to be a Maxine Waters. I don't understand how she could be so little and so bold, but she speaks her mind and I praise God that he has given her the time to really speak for black America. Somebody ought to help her. Because she is a strong, powerful woman. We're losing some of our celebration uh, of women because we probably don't need a lot of what these great women once gave us. <laughs> this is funny to me, but Mac this lady, Mary McLeod, some of the older ladies will remember, she fought for schools. She had schools built for women, for girls. She wanted them to go to school. But guess what? The funny part is we don't even get our children to school. Our children don't, you know, they don't want to go to school. Well, the teacher said this, and the teacher said that. But our mama didn't raise us to talk about what our teachers didn't do. When we had to go to school, we had to go to school, and the teachers didn't mind giving you a whipping at school. And then you got a whipping. Y'all know that? You got a whipping when you got home. And this lady built a school for girls when there was no school. And guess what? I just don't understand how so many of our girls don't go to school. They're on the street, and they dress wrong, and they talk wrong, and they vulgar. And I'm trying to say, where are the mothers that are supposed to be training these children? This lady built a school. We can't even get our kids to go to school. I'm concerned that when they don't go to school, where are they? You don't know where your girls are. I'm sorry, there are hundreds of mothers who have babies, and I did a study on that, who are single parents, and they are in prison. So who's raising our girls? We had a beautiful situation for schools in another day because your mama had to get you to school if she had to walk you to school. No lunch money. I remember my grandmother brought red beans and sandwiches to my, grand my mama because they were determined to get these girls to school. I don't understand how you can leave your children at home and don't take them to church. Your children need to be with you 
at church. They need to go to Sunday school. They need to have a, a, a dress code. They ought not come to church any old kind of way, and they ought not go to school any old kind of way. There ought to be some teaching going on with our girls. Have y'all looked at them lately? I don't, I don't live in LA. I live really far, but when I go into LA, I'm stunned at whose children are these that would just let them come out looking any old kind of way. And I'm saying, well, I know one thing, God is holding somebody responsible for them. And we ought to look forward to helping some of these girls get to school. The saddest situation is that we can't, this is funny to me, we can't even teach our families recipes. You know how you used to pass down recipes and teach your children and your girls how to make cakes and how to cook bread pudding and we can't do that no more because we got food you buy in a box. <laughs> they fix it for you and tell you to order it. We'll fix it. I, I keep trying to figure out how we go eat white people's food. I know they ain't got no greens and cornbread in them, in them boxes. We used to teach our girls how to cook, how to bake greens and cornbread. What's going to happen to our food if y'all ain't teaching them how to make macaroni and cheese? They can't get that in a box. Y'all heard that on the radio? It says, just call us and we'll bring your dinner to you and our family will cut up the, what are they cutting up for us? Stuff we don't know nothing about. And they have good, good sales pitches. But every time I hear one, I say, I know they ain't got no hog mogs. thing that's got me this week, y'all, you know what got me this week? Is that they got a boiled egg peeler. <laughs> they say it's hard to peel an egg. Y'all didn't see it yet? Look at it. It's on television. They got a boiled egg peeler that they want you to order, and they say no more trouble with peeling an egg. You haven't seen this? We're losing so much of our heritage. We used boiled eggs for everything. We used boiled eggs for potato salad. So when did it get to be a struggle to peel it? We, the, the, actually, we didn't have any problem with the eggs. It was the potatoes that was hard. And then we finally figured that out. Because I'm cheat. I, I parboiled mine first. We had so many things that we're losing because we have not kept the standard that our parents set for us. We can't even bake anything anymore because the microwave take two minutes. <laughs> when was the last time you fixed cornbread in the oven? 
these things we used to be fond of. It was a part of our heritage. We used to eat together and say the blessing. How many of y'all still say a blessing at the table? Mothers were concerned about teaching their children the ABCs before they went to school. We sure got a whipping if we didn't know ours. Timetables. We had to, you don't know how many whippings my brother got because he didn't know his alphabet. But the Lord had blessed our family with a little education but a lot of wisdom. And that's what we're missing right now, is wisdom. We actually made our children go to church. We made them go to school. And now we gotta figure out if we go into church. Our actual struggle is because the foundation of Christianity is faltering. I don't want to get in trouble about this, but how many of you have computers at home and a phone? Those of you who have a phone with what they call apps, APPS, applications on the computer, I'm going to go home when I say this. But the church has actually become an app in the world of things. We used to be independent. The world used to come to us. When there was an election, the people who were running for the office came to the church and asked, is this okay? But right now, they don't come asking, is it okay anymore? They, they do stuff that's against us and allows us to be secondhand. But what has happened is because the church has become an icon of the world, an app of the world. We're just, we just, we just on the screen, but we used to be independent of the world. I saw something the other day that bothered me. It was a church that had no doors, no windows, and actually the roads went out from the church. Because what's happening now, nobody has to come through the church to do anything. They can go around us. They, they really, nobody comes in, nobody comes out. And so they actually make a significant change in the world without us. Have you seen that lately? We have people now selling dope to our kids at school and the church is next door. We have people on the streets at our grocery stores selling dope to our children and the policemen are standing there. There is a lack of power in the church. Now we got plenty of churches. We got thousands of members but we don't have no power. Power is gone. Our children are going to hell from church. Our actual jails are full of young mothers because we have allowed ourselves to be put in a situation where we care more about where we live, the car we drive, the clothes we wear, rather than seeing about our children. And so it has become so 
profound to know that Satan is working against the church. You, you need to know that. Now, if we have thousands of churches in America and thousands of Christians in America, why is it that we cannot stop the dope dealers from going to our children at school? Why is it that we can't stop them from hanging around the liquor stores and selling stuff to our children that we don't want them to have? And that makes a difference when mothers are praying. I actually have several mothers at our church who are raising their children by themselves. But they shouldn't be by themselves when we have a church full of people. Because they actually could use some help from those of you who already know what to do. I think that what the Lord has said to me several times in the book of John 4, he says, I am looking for a true worshiper, somebody who will worship me in spirit and in truth. And that means mothers are on their knees praying. Did you ever have your grandmother pray for you? I had my grandmother pray for me. The reason I am who I am today is because she got on her knees. She took me to the printer to get my first song written. And, I, and she was 80 years old then, but when I came from school, she said, come on, we're going to go and find somebody to write this clean heart song down. Grandmothers prayed, prayed, prayed. There is a passage of scripture that I read often, and I think I read it to the point where it's so much a part of me, I can't go beyond Romans 12. It says, be ye transformed. Y'all read that? By the way you think. And <laughs> Pastor, I didn't know where I was, but I was in a homosexual church speaking, and I spoke on this passage. Y'all missed it? I didn't know. I saw the men hugged up, and the women hugged up, but it didn't dawn on me that it was a gay church. I didn't know. And I spoke on be transformed, changed by the renewing of your mind. Somehow or another, we need to get off. The, we need to not be. We need to get off the radar of the world. We don't need to act like them. We don't need music like them. We don't need to dress like them. They need to dress like us. There ought to be some music. You know, I don't mean no harm, but y'all know I'm in the music business. And I went somewhere at one of the colleges, and the professor said, I am actually tired of these 7-Eleven songs seven words, 11 times. <laughs> it gets to the point where you don't get any message. You just get a redundant word and the reason is, is because we become, we are an icon of the world. We want to look like the world. We want to sing. We want our music to be like the world. There are musicians now that pave the way for preaching. Preacher don't come in 
till the music is done and setting the tone for the preaching. When you got a preacher who can preach, you don't need the musicians to set a tone. You need people who are on your team. Choirs are weird, y'all. Y'all don't know that, but they got people in a choir who won't sing unless the right pianist is there. And to tell you the truth, they can't sing anyway. They got musicians who will only play for certain choirs. And they got people who won't sing till pastor come in. You know, he loves to hear me sing. And when I sing, people falls all out the balcony. Church needs to build on Jesus alone. I understand how significant soloists are, but, and I say this all the time, if you haul off and die, somebody will sing your selection at your funeral. And the same people who shouted when you sung it will shout when somebody else sings it. You are not the only singer in America. Somebody got your solo down pat. I'm always worried about, and, and I'm, I'm just talking because I've, I've been in church hmm, 70 years now. I have to watch deacons sleep at church. That's an MO thing because somehow or another, deacons have the responsibility to shoulder the pastor, to carry him. But if you are sleeping, you cannot support him. You need to wake up and say amen or something. When you think about the fact that God has given us everything we need, we got wonderful singers. But if you're singing on the basis that you can sing and not glorify God, you are, and the word says this, you are like sounding brass, y'all ain't read that, and tingling cymbals. And so that means that you have to be able to ask God, created me a clean heart and renew within me a right spirit. I, I, somebody else say, I thank you for the gift, but I want to give you the glory. I want to use this gift. I know there are people in church who think that Reverend ain't going to make it without them. Y'all didn't know that? I got to be there because Reverend Turner needs me. And if I don't go, he going to be looking for me. And my seat going to be empty. You stay home long enough, somebody will fill your seat. And they will be able to support pastor just as much. Let me just say for women, Women have always been a leading arm of the church. We always had the leading arm. We, we always have to make sure that the money is raised and that the uh, committees are running. But let me just tell you something. Anytime you think you got everything you need to do, what the church needs, somebody else got it too. You're not the only one that got something to go on. You, you actually have so little compared to what God has because God can call anybody to do your part. 
Tell somebody, you can call somebody, do your part. The word of God says, the word of God says, when you are transformed, you think different. It says, be you transformed. I watched this lady over here who's getting the accolades for supporting the mother's board. She's sitting way in the back. She didn't want to come up. Somebody had to go get her. She, and she had contributed to the mother's board without nobody telling her to. But some people gonna want a banner. You know I've been working with the mother's board for 50 years. I picked some up and I dropped them off and I went to see them in the hospital and, and she called me in the middle of the night. But somehow, when you're doing things in the church to glorify God, you don't need any recognition. You don't need your name. You know, it's, I, I'm a church person, so everything I think of has got to do with church. They got people who get mad if they name ain't on the program. She forgot my name on purpose. She do it all the time, you know. I knew she wasn't going to call me my name on that program. That's why I don't like to do nothing at church. Because they don't never give me no credit. And plus, she took my seat. <laughs> I've been sitting there for 40 years. She know I sit there. My mama bought this chair. Her name is on it. I put it on the window. This chair was bought by. And so why is she sitting where she know I'm going to sit? Somebody ought to say, if the Lord's in the house, let me sit anywhere. Amen. A lot of these women, these mothers, built churches from the ground up. We, we we raised money. My daddy built a church in Los Angeles without a loan. We built it without a loan because mothers like this raised money for the sanctuary. And I'm sorry how we've lost the fervor of church. We are imitating stuff that comes on television. We imitate where we park and what we drive and what we wear when God is saying, y'all didn't read this one, but he says, all I want you to do is decrease. Y'all didn't read that? You get smaller so I can get bigger. You decrease. I know you singing the solo from Solo Bill, but if you just decrease, somebody will get the message. I know you sung all over the country, but if you just decrease, I can speak to somebody. I know you know how to pray, and I know pastor don't like to preach until you sing, but if you hurry up and sit down, I can glory, be glorified by pastor. Somebody ought to know it. You ain't got, tell somebody, you ain't got no healing power. You ain't got no financial power. God actually gives us everything we need. Even if you don't go to work, you still eat. Anybody been without a job and ate every day? That's because of who God is. Anybody who's had. Uh, no rent and God let you stay somewhere and pay the rent his way you ought to know God is able 
I'm so blessed that the word of God says, church be transformed by the way you think. Don't put your eggs in your own basket. Do you remember the story of Red Riding Hood? <laughs> Red Robin Hood, I think that's her name. She was taking food to her grandmother. This is a church scene. Because before she could get it to her grandmother, y'all didn't know the story? The wolf stole it. Your gift can be taken as quick as it is given. There's got some people in here say, I used to be able to hit high C in the middle of the night and can't sing a note. Because Satan took your gift because you were so careless with it. They got people in here this is, a, this is an interesting thing to me. They eat without a job. You work every day and eat, but there are people here who eat who don't have a job and ain't worked in several years. And God prepares a table before them and they eat. Anybody in here should be in jail, but God delivered you. Your friends went. Your friends went to jail, but you didn't go to jail. Y'all don't want to admit that? God saved you from penitentiary, but you were in the gang that went to penitentiary. They got some people in here who did dope, but they're not dope addicts. God, God is a miracle worker. And it ain't because you so good, but it's because God is who he is. I praise God for the mothers that taught us, that walked with us, that built churches, that took care of children, that understood that there was no education for them, but their children was going to get one. And they made them go to school. They, they made food out of garden supplies. They, grew greens, they grew, they killed chickens. Y'all ever saw a chicken? Them little kids over there. Y'all saw a chicken kill? My grandfather used to cut the neck and eat chicken. But we had good food because our grandparents knew how to worship the Lord. I'm worried about church. And this is in the word of God said, my church will not die because he is built the church is built, y'all ain't read it, on a solid rock. But there are some things that are mimicking the world that takes the power out of church. I'm not talking about the worship. I'm talking about church where we just go because it's Sunday. And as soon as we get there, we have a million, you know, they got people who will stop you on the parking lot and tell you some stuff that makes you mad. Before you get to the choir stand, you done heard 13 pieces of garbage. If it is so important that God built his church on a rock, then somebody ought to stand on the rock. We ought to be able to move, y'all didn't read that passage, but it says, if you say to the mountain, be thou removed, you can move mountains out of your way. I want to call the attention to mothers because we need to do some real soul searching about our children. You know what? When we grew up, there was no, are you going to church this morning? Did your mama ask you if you was going? My mama didn't ask me if I was going. What she said was, get up! She didn't ask you.
how long you stayed out last night? Because you shouldn't have been out anyway. I remember we had to sneak in. Mm -hmm. My brother, who was a hoodlum, he had a window that faced the yard. And all he had to do was come down and open the door. But rather than to help us out, he would say, Daddy, go open the door. And we'd be outside trying to get in two hours later than we were supposed to. But regardless to what time we got home, Sunday morning, Get up! Okay, could I go to 11 o'clock service? No! We go to Sunday school. We go to morning worship. These kids don't know nothing about this. We go to 3.30 service. We go to 6 o'clock service. That was BTU. And then we went to night service. And if it wasn't too late, we'd drive over to the broadcast. Monday night, we may rest. Tuesday was choir rehearsal. Wednesday was prayer meeting. Thursday was mission. Friday was teacher's meeting. And Saturday, we were washing our socks again. Church was the center of our lives. <coughs> One of the things that bothers me about this app, this, this just, just a glimmer on the icon page, is that we actually cannot create the atmosphere to worship when we're trying so hard to mimic the world. We want to look like them. We want our music to sound like them. We want our Holy Ghost dance to be like theirs. Have you seen some of them spiritual dances lately? Y'all ain't seen them. Mm -mm, mm -mm. They ain't seen them. Because some of them, you know, as, as we move towards the workshops, we, we see people come to the front to dance. They can't dance back there. They come, a group of them, have you seen them? Yeah. Have you seen them? Yeah. They, all of them come right there and they dance and dance. Don't look nothing like Jesus. I'm praying that the mothers in this building will begin to take the responsibility yes, yes. to raise their children in the fear of the Lord. Amen. Pray for your grandchildren. Pray for your children. Make sure that you keep them before the Lord Jesus Christ. We're losing a battle because our children don't know the God that we know. There's stuff that comes into the houses today that couldn't come in my house. You talking about let them do it here because I'd rather them do it at home than, no, don't do it out there and don't do it here. Don't bring it in here. You, your children shouldn't have stuff that you don't know where they got it. I'm praying that the word of God will give you Romans 12. Be transformed by the way you think. Don't allow Satan to rule your mind. God has a plan for these children and you need to be responsible 
for making sure that they hear the word of God. Teach them some scriptures. Sit them around your bed and teach them how David and Goliath fought. Teach them something about the fact that God allowed David to kill that giant with the smallest stone. There's something about te parents teaching children that make a difference. Let me just close by saying, and I'm referring to John 4 again. He says, I am going from church to church. You need to read this. I'm going from church to church. And the reason I'm going from church to church is because I'm looking for a true worshiper. That Y'all don't understand that. With all the churches we have in America, why would he have to say he's looking for a true worshiper? Does that mean there are some people in here who are not here to worship? Does it mean that you're here because you got on a new suit or you here because it's Mother's Day or because my, I wanted to be around this family? The word of God says all I want is somebody who will say hallelujah, wave their hand when the word of God is spoken. When somebody says Jesus, somebody ought to say hallelujah. Somebody said healing, I was healed and you ought to shine on the fact that you were healed, not because you got a solo, but because my feet were hurting. And, and now I'm better. I can walk right now. I, can, I, I had a bad headache. My blood pressure was high. I, and God brought me anyway. And Lord says, I'm looking for a true worshiper. Got arthritis in my arm, but let me wave my hand. I just want to wave my hand. I want to see. Say hallelujah. I want to bless the Lord. I know that I don't have no money, but I ain't hungry. I'm not outside. I'm blessed. I don't have no new clothes on, but I'm not naked. God bless me to be in my right mind. I had a job. I ate. I got clothes. My children are home. You ought to shout on, tell somebody, shout on purpose. Tell somebody, shout on purpose. Just think. Think about the goodness of the Lord. He says, think about it. I'm looking for somebody to worship me. Tell the person next to you, I want to worship the Lord. In spirit and in truth. I want to say hallelujah. I want to say bless the Lord. I, somebody ought to say, I thank you, Lord.